What is happening ladies and gentlemen? My name is Ty behind the camera for yet another video here on Ty Drives. Sitting in front of me is the 2024 Chevy Malibu and this one's in the RS trim so we have some uh, pretty sporty looking features going on with this one. It's finished in this gorgeous lakeshore metallic color which is new for 2024 and I have one question for your view you viewers that we will be answer by the end of the video and I want you guys to answer it in the comments below. Is the Malibu still relevant in the mid-size sedan uh, category? In this video I'm going to show you all of the features this Malibu has to offer starting on the exterior. We'll then pop the hood, see what kind of engine we have under there. We'll also check out how much trunk space, also how much interior space and amenities we have and so make sure you stay tuned to the end of the video so you can answer my question. Now, if you're looking for a test drive on the new Malibu, I have filmed that as well. So definitely check my channel, Ty Drives, for that video as well. But we're going to start on the features here on the exterior with our headlamps. Now, on this RS trim, we have full halogen headlamps. We do have projectors for the low beams and reflectors for the high beams. Looks pretty good, all illuminated. And just below, we have our turn signals, so it looks pretty good. Uh, down there as well kind of a safety feature to have your turn signals separate from the headlamps just so you could see them a little bit better Backing up a bit we see we have some pretty good looking grill here with the RS trim And that also gives us a blacked out Chevy emblem so nice wide grill opening chrome accents and glossy black in the center Taking a look at the hood we have a long sloping hood with some pretty nice looking creases and very nice wheels on the RS trim. So we kind of have the machine face for the rim with some black pockets. And they measure up at 18 inches. Our tires are 245.65. I'm sorry, 245.45. Looking down the side, we do have some accented trim around the windows and our blacked out Malibu emblem on the driver's door. The mirrors on the RS trim are pretty basic unless you had the option to have your blind spot warning, uh, but they do um, fold in manually. And we also have smart key entry on the driver and front passenger door. So if you have the key fob on you, all you need to do is lock the car, just press the chrome button and then press it again to unlock. Quick glance at the window sticker shows a $27,095 window sticker. So that's the total MSRP for this car. Quite a good value for the money at that price point. Got our shark fin antenna, third brake light, and a really pretty color with this lakeshore blue. Looks very nice in the sunlight. Our tail lamps are all halogen powered, so for your brake lights, turn signals, and um, your tail lights are all uh, regular bulbs. The Malibu. Uh, emblem is blacked out on the trunk as well. We have the blacked out Chevy bow tie and our RS badging towards the other side. Now with the RS trim, you'll get parking sensors in the rear as standard, as well as some pretty nice looking chrome exhaust surrounds. And just underneath the blacked out Chevy emblem, we have a reversing camera and the ability to pop your trunk. And I can't forget to mention this nice looking spoiler on the trunk. So what do we think of the exterior? I definitely think the RS dresses the Malibu up quite nicely. I think it's a pretty nice looking car. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Popping the hood on the Malibu reveals one single powertrain for 2024 and it is a 1.5 liter turbocharged four cylinder. And it's got 163 horsepower, 184 pound-feet of torque. So not a whole lot of horsepower, but the torque figure is uh, pretty healthy. Um, as far as the transmission goes, we do have a CVT, meaning there is one continuous gear. And front-wheel drive is the only powertrain available. Very easy serviceability for the uh, Malibu. You still have a uh, oil dipstick, and it takes 0W24 oil. And we can see we have the turbocharger front and center. Lots of sound deadening material in here too to make the cabin nice and quiet up on the hood and on the firewall. It does still use a prop to hold the hood up. There's a couple of buttons to pop the trunk, but the one I'm going to show you now is a double tap on the key fob. 
and that will pop the trunk open to just about here and if you just lift it up the rest of the way it reveals a pretty sizable trunk as you can see the floor mats are in there and it barely takes up just a little bit of room um, we also have these tabs here to fold down the rear seats at a 60 40 split and it's pretty basic just a very large trunk underneath the cargo floor you can see we have our uh, tire repair kit and we also have tie downs at the ends of the trunk right here there is a handle up here where you can close it right on down and let's get into the interior next we're going to start things off with the interior on the rear seats now as far as the rear door panel goes it's actually pretty nicely appointed we have this large cloth material going right down here from your upper door sill all the way down to where your arm is going to rest we have some nice trim here with like a metallic gray color and your chrome door handles and actually quite a bit of storage down below now if we take a look back here we of course have the jet black cloth seats and there really isn't a whole lot for amenities back here there is no armrest uh, but of course you can fold the seats down to get extra storage um, there is a lot of room back here though i will say that so we'll just kind of hop in so i can show you how much room so I'm about 5 foot 10, and this is how much room I would have sitting behind myself. And we do have a 12 volt charger back here. It'd be nice to see some USBs or even USB-C ports, but uh, just a 12 volt power outlet. Uh, but we do have a really small drivetrain hump, so that definitely helps if you needed to seat uh, three people across. Comfy headrests that you can raise up and down. And we have a full gray headliner with some lighting back here and, of course, coat hooks. All right, so now the part you've all been waiting for, let's take a dive into the driver's area where we have the same sort of materials as out back, that big cloth section. Up here is a soft to the touch material too, so that's definitely a little bit better than out back. We of course have our chrome door handles to lock unlock right up top, and the rest of our uh, kind of mirror adjustments, window lockout for the children in the rear, and our uh, windows. A little bit of storage up top and quite a bit more storage down here, as you can see, nice deep bin and a bottle holder there is a speaker on the driver's door in the rs trim you get six speakers and on the left of the dash we have this air vent with some accents and some more of that cloth we have our gauge dimmer which you could pop out like so and all of our headlights down here we have the hood release and our metal pedals the driver's seat is eight-way adjustable very very comfy cloth seat the passenger seat is six-way manual adjusting as you can see we have all the controls down here with your two-way lumbar and let's hop in and see what else we can check out here's a quick look at the key before we go any further we got the typical chevy key fob with the emblem on the back and you can also slide out a physical key pressing that chrome button but as far as functionalities we have the lock unlock the remote start, trunk release, and a panic alarm. But this does have push button start right behind the steering wheel, so just put on your brake and press the button. This is definitely a nice, quiet engine upon startup. You can barely even tell that it's running right now. Uh, but as far as the features go, let's focus on what's right in front of us, and that is the nice, smooth, leather-wrapped steering wheel. Uh, pretty cool-looking design with a small airbag cover. All of your cruise control settings over here is for as, as well as your front collision warning uh, adjustment. Lane keep assist aid right here so you can turn that turn on and off. We have voice commands, Bluetooth phone controls, and an adjustment pad for the screen up there. Now, there's also some hidden controls behind the steering wheel, kind of in a paddle function on this side. This will adjust your audio volume so you have up and down. And on the other side, we can adjust your radio stations. Good amount of standard safety equipment on this car, so they get that lane keeping assist, the front collision warning, uh, front pedestrian detection, and you also have automatic high beams too, which is a very nice uh, welcome feature on this car. As far as this stock goes, we have our, of course, regular high beams, automatic high beams adjustment, and your turn signals. And to the other side, we have our front, our uh, just our front wipers. Obviously, we don't have a rear wiper in this car. Um, so used to reviewing um, uh, SUVs nowadays, I kind of forget that uh, sedans are out there and they don't have rear wipers. But 
Let's take a look at our gauges, which is a pretty basic setup on this one. You can get a little bit of a nicer one with a full color display, but this is the more basic gauge setup. Pretty simple, we have our tachometer with the auto start stop display. Up here we have the fuel gauge, coolant temperature, and our speedometer with a little digital portion. Again, we're gonna use these uh, controls here to adjust that digital portion in the middle of the gauges so we can go up and down on kind of our trip settings. You can see a digital speedometer, trip A and trip B, distance till empty, uh, average vehicle speed, and a timer for whatever you need. If we move over to the vehicle, um, we have some kind of service uh, reminders, tire pressures, uh, following distance, battery, voltage, you get the idea of that one. And if we move over to an eco screen, it'll kind of show us an instantaneous fuel economy and an average fuel economy. You also have a little eco index bar right down there, so that's pretty neat. Uh, some pretty useful information within that center screen, uh, just not maybe the best looking one in the world. But again, you got to remember the price point. This car is $27,000 for a brand new midsize sedan, uh, so that's a pretty good deal. Up here, we have a nice soft to the touch dash. We have our uh, kind of alert um, lights up there. So if we're kind of uh, going outside of our lane, some lights will project, uh, project onto the um, onto the windshield, almost in a kind of head of display kind of style, just to get your attention. That brings me down to our center touchscreen. Very nice looking uh, touchscreen. Pretty good size uh, for nowadays. I think it's, I believe it's an eight inch touchscreen. If we move over like this, we have our home screen. We can adjust all of our presets up top. Radio here, phone here, and some shortcuts at the bottom. We have our audio screen right here, which when you switch over to, let's go to FM, it'll show you what, uh, what is playing at the current moment. We also have our sound adjustments, uh, browsing and then skipping uh, between different radio stations there. We have a phone screen, Wi-Fi information, and tons of different settings to go through. Uh, system, app settings, vehicle settings, all kinds of different stuff. And then, of course, we have our Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So pretty simple screen, uh, but very appealing to the eyes nonetheless. So that's just a quick overview of the screen. I could definitely get into it and go longer and kind of explain all the settings and things like that. Uh, but I don't think we want to go through all of that stuff. Right below the screen, we have some physical shortcut cuts, so a home, back, skipping, and then a volume knob. Just below that, we have our button to turn on and off your auto start stop, as well as your hazards. Very simple single zone climate control for the Malibu RS. Of course, a dual zone climate control setup is available in the upper trims, but right here we have our fan speed, our temperature, where the air blows, defrosters, and AC settings. Super, super simple. Down here below our climate controls, we have a kind of storage pad. We also have some connections. So we have a USB-C connection, a regular USB, an auxiliary, and a 12 volt power outlet. So kind of got you covered with one of each style connection. Right behind the shifter, it may be easier if I show you this way. We can turn on and off our parking sensors as well as our traction control. And right down here is our gear selector for that CVT transmission. Uh, now we do have some uh, RS badging and some red uh, colored stitching on the shift boot, which is a nice little detail. We can pull it down into reverse where we have a very nice backup camera with some adjustable guidance lines. And we of course have neutral drive and a low mode so you can get up the hills. And then there's also some manual shifting abilities. So the top will be plus and then minus at the bottom. And we also have an electronic parking brake right here. We have a couple of decent sized cup holders and a little tray here to put loose change. And a nice large armrest. Once you lift it up, there's tons and tons of storage inside um, with a uh, pad on the bottom. Taking a look at this side of the dash, we have a full carpeting and um, pretty nice size glove box too. So if we open that up, we can see the entire front plate bracket is inside. So that's just to give you a good idea on how large it is. Taking a look up here at our gray headliner, we of course have the visors and you can open up their mirror and then you can also extend them to the side. Up here we do have some 
uh, LED illumination and also your OnStar controls as well as your uh, pretty traditional mirror up here. Uh, so that is pretty nice. But that pretty much does it for all the features on the Malibu. Join us in our full test drive on the separate video. I appreciate you watching and we'll see you next time.